Welcome again, my young friends. You know, founded in 1954, the Amigo Corporation developed cheaper toys for those five and dime stores I grew up with across the U.S. And in 1971, it was left to the founder's son, Marty Abrams, who decided to take it in a new, bold direction. Check out this commercial from the early 70s. This is probably what I remember Mego for the most. The world's greatest superheroes, Batman and Robin, the dynamic duo, Superman, the man of steel, Aquaman, the famous undersea crime fighter, Tarzan of the Apes, Shazam, now featured on network television, Captain America, fighting injustice the world over, Spider-Man, the weird wall climber, the super foes, the arch enemies of the superheroes. The super gals, Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Batgirl, and Catwoman. The Green Arrow, crime fighter from the forest. Iron Man, power personified. The Falcon, that great black superhero. The Green Goblin, Spider-Man's strange enemy. The Lizard, half man, half beast. And that fantastic green giant superhero, the Hulk. And for 1976, the Fantastic Four, the torch, faster than the speed of light. The Thing, Ben Grimm, man of granite. Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Girl, both have the powers of invisibility. Yeah, I admit, there are many things wrong with this commercial. First of all, super powers. That's pretty sexist. I mean, you know, it's kind of embarrassed when my daughter saw this one. Fantastic Four. Uh, Human Torch can't travel at the speed of light. And, you know, I don't think Mr. Fantastic has the power of visibility there. But I think the worst one was when they were like, I'm Falcon. That great black superhero. Like they had to point that out. Yeah, I know, Cap. I'm sorry, Falcon. It wasn't my idea. And Amigo wasn't stopping at those eight inch action figures either. They had like accessories like, you know, Bat Cave, Batmobile, Batcycle, but Bat Chopper. I, I liked the Batmobile the best. It was one of my favorite Christmas presents as a kid. Loved it. They ventured into like the Teen Titans, the Christopher Reeve Superman, which was like some 12 inch figure or something. They even tapped right into Star Trek. It was seeing a resurgence from the reruns and the animated series. I mean, just look at this whole commercial. These kids are having fun. Look how Spock disappeared in the transport. That's pretty good technology for the time, you know? I mean, the sculpt on these figures were just beautiful. Uh, Enterprise Place, uh, I had this. It was just so much fun. You know, the first property they delved into wasn't even superheroes or Star Trek. It was Planet of the Apes. One of the best science fiction movies ever made. You had like the gorilla, you had Dr. Zayas, Cornelius, you had Zira. You had the astronaut doll. I mean... I don't think Chuck Heston gave his likeness for this one. These were high quality figures with real cloth outfits and really good likenesses. They even had a Planet of the Apes treehouse. It was just a lot of fun. Aside from that, they had Action Jackson. I liked him. The Universal Monsters. They even started with like famous people like Sonny and Cher. Hey, don't laugh. That shared doll was the best selling toy of 1976. <laughs> Sorry, Sonny. Yeah, Muhammad Ali, Joe Namath, Farrah Fossil. Oh, God, that's scary. Jacqueline Smith. I love you, Jacqueline Smith. <sighs> I really do. 
They had the Wizard of Oz line with the characters like the Scarecrow, the Lion, the Tin Man. They even went into a TV market with the Happy Days gang. They had Fonz and they had like Ralph Mouth and Potsy and Richie. Listen kids, if you don't know what Happy Days is, just go on Google. Type in Fonz. You'll see. I had a rock band kiss. I mean, my mom was scared of Gene Simmons. Look at that tongue coming out. I was scaring moms everywhere across the country. Yeah, well, things got murky when they made Fighting Yank. Let's be honest, this was a ripoff of Hasbro's G.I. Joe. And then it got worse from there. When the factory people in Hong Kong were making Fighting Yank, they just copied the Hasbro G.I. Joe figure exact. You know how they knew? Because the G.I. Joe people accidentally put the thumbnail on the wrong side of the thumb. And Migo just copied it exact. They got in some legal trouble for that. You're a naughty boy, Marty. In 1977, a little movie came out you might have heard of. Called Star Wars. And they came out with their own action figures from Kenner. These weren't the 8 inch dolls, these were 3 and 3 quarter inch figures and they sold like hotcakes. Beyond anyone's expectation. Now Amigo, they tried those 3 inch figures with the Micronaut series and it was fun and it sold pretty well. I even had those guys right there. But it was nothing compared to the Juggernaut that was Star Wars. Amigo would try anything to get a majority of that market share back. And it made dolls of things like Dallas and Chips and James Bond Moonraker or Disney's Black Hole, but nothing could compete to Star Wars and they were losing money. They even got in some big legal trouble from the Stretch Armstrong people. You know, they kind of took their copyrighted stretching technique. And then Marty got into more trouble. Finally, Migo was sadly put to rest. Well, lo and behold, after three decades of being gone, Migo's making a comeback of sorts. Feeding off our nostalgia, they're bringing toys back into the stores and comic conventions. And you know what? Even though I'm probably not going to get any, it's still kind of fun to see. People kind of reliving their childhood in some ways. And you know what? I'm alright with that. I'll always be grateful to Migo for helping me make some really nice childhood memories. Till next time, catch on the flip side, my friends.